Hey yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the MMBC po Actually, I can't say welcome back because this is our first episode. No YouTube intro here. Right now we got Jake Freeman, Jason Capo, and me, Asher, but... We got our guest here, the guy who got every girl here singing some beautiful stuff. He's like R. Kelly, but doesn't pee on little girls. <laughs> JBR right here outside. Sure, you know, yes, this man sure. has been killing it at the University of Michigan, playing at crazy shows. Man, JBR, how are you doing right now? I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be here. I feel like I'm in the presence of greatness. Hey, likewise, likewise, I'd say. So right now we're thinking about uh, chopping it up about some music news. We right now want to know, uh, how do you think about this? Uh, a hacker illegally exposed a bunch of accounts. You know, he got Ed Sheeran, Lil Uzi Vert. Oh, Honestly, what I'm thinking is like, why do you go for Ed Sheeran and then Lil Uzi Vert first? Like, that's yeah. a pretty random, random two duo to, to go to. But, you know, uh, he got 18 months in jail. That's crazy. Would you, want, would you want that if someone leaked your music? Listen, I mean... I think it's like a big business right now. You know, Ed Sheeran's like the best songwriter in the world, like arguably. And then you have Uzi who like puts out hit after hit. So those are two good people to go after. Um, if somebody leaked all my music, I would want them to do more than 18 months because I got some bangers in the vault that haven't, haven't seen the light of day yet um, that are about to get people going crazy. So I don't know. 18 months seems like, seems like a lot. But at the same time, yeah. if I was an artist in their position... I would definitely want that. I don't want to be like a jerk to these artists who work hard and make their music, but like I already know both of them had that shit in the notes app. Like you already, like yeah. you see artists, they have it in the notes app. Why? You're Ed Sheeran, you're Lil Uzi. You don't <laughs> need to have it in the notes app. Put it on yeah. Google Drive or Dropbox or something. I don't know. That's what I would do. And he got 89 of these artists. So That's it's like, crazy. damn, he had a method. And whatever that method is, I want to know because like I'm trying to hear the Carter Six. So like I, I honestly yeah. might do that. But. Fact. French Montana raised $200 to build homes in Africa. And honestly, my script is gone. I don't exactly know what the whole story was, but this <laughs> man is making money to do the right thing. Kind of reminds me of Akon out here. Yeah. Who like built a whole city in Africa. And Akon it gets me thinking. City. Yeah. 200 million. 200 million, 200 by the way. Million. Correction. Correction. 200, he raised $200 million. Correction. Don't believe everything you hear on the internet from me. <laughs> $200 million. What... French Montana, I did not know he was that cool. I knew the New York City mayor, you know Eric Adams. Yeah. I know Eric Adams is always just out hanging out with French Montana. I'm pretty sure he went up to his place for like a week, and, and that's why there's so many rats in the city. But, <laughs> you know, I know that French Montana, I got to just shout you out. Thanks, man. Thanks for not being a scumbag like a lot of other artists. And thanks for actually, you know, not saying all artists are scumbags, but, you know, I like that you're doing something good for the people. And I know certainly, you know, you're setting a good example for a lot of people. Um, we got another artist out here who, this is more of a moral gray area, Steve Lacey. He got a, a phone <laughs> through at him, or a disposable camera it was actually, uh, at a concert. He just smashed it right on the stage. What do y'all think about that? As an artist, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's tough. If somebody threw a disposable camera up on stage, I'd probably just use it for the rest of the show and then give it back, give them some memories. Um, but I think, like, the water bottle stuff is crazy. Like, did you see the clip of Kid Cudi yeah. when he Cuddy was at his was concert bad. and people were just throwing he walked off stage. Uh, water bottles at him? Up. Yeah, so, like, that that type of stuff is different because, like, Cudi's a legend. So, like, throwing water bottles at Cudi when he's on stage because you think another artist is going to come out is crazy. Um, but, yeah, throwing a disposable up and smashing it is kind of, like, a little bit diva. And the whole the whole Cudi situation, audience disrespect, it kind of reminds me of when they bought uh, Drake out and everyone thought it was going to be Frank Ocean and got yeah. hype and Drake got booed off stage. And it's like, exactly. come on, you got some of the best artists in the world. Like, I would kill this. Like, I'm not the biggest Drake meat rider, but I would still love to see Drake in concert. And it's like, for all those people booing at these, like, these great artists and throwing stuff at them, it kind of makes me sad because it's like, a lot of people would kill to be there where you are right now and you're just, yeah. you know, not taking advantage of your situation. But I think the throwing stuff on stage is like a bit of a different thing because like I've seen just people try to get on stage. I know like a, a fan tried to get on stage at a Roddy Rich concert and I saw yeah. Roddy Rich just went up to him and kicked him. Yeah. Like he just kicked him. <laughs> and like these artists, like they're in the moment, they're doing their thing and they don't like when people attack them. Like honestly, I don't really blame Steve Lacey for just going crazy at it. Like yeah. that's what I would do. But I mean, it's just sometimes the fans get a little disrespectful. I think we need better security. We see people sneaking into Uzi concerts because yeah, they facts. just get a fake security guard get facts. like vest. It can't be that Crazy. hard. You get Obama out here or Trump or Biden, and they have EMP jammers everywhere they go within 30 <laughs> blocks, and like, yet you can uh, just throw a water bottle at Steve Lacey or Kid Cudi or whatever. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I go, you know, give you a sec, but I agree with Asher is like when these artists are up there performing in front of like 100,000 people, 50,000 people, like rolling loud, like I've been there, it's insane. The environment's insane. People get too rowdy and they're throwing shit. Like Kid Cudi, for example, like Jansen said, like throwing water balls and artists like to, for the next artist, like, yo, like, it's like kind of, it's, it, I think it's super immature of the audience. And I think like smashing the camera, for example, is like a very, 
like normal thing that an artist would do if any artist was in that situation and just over it, trying to perform, trying to be a rock star, trying to like perform their like their their craft, like and they're just getting shit thrown at them, like phones. Like I see this shit happening at concerts, phones are getting thrown up on stages and like yes, like here and there they'll take photos. I've seen phones, like just hundreds of phones after one person does it thrown up there, it's like they just don't get them back. I mean yeah. I don't blame him for smashing the camera personally. No. Yeah, I don't blame him. I think that, honestly, I think that, you know, if you're an artist, like, you don't know what could happen. Like, people coming up on stage, like, I, I just don't think that's justified. Um, yeah, I think uh, if you throw something up stage, you should not expect to get it back. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And just honestly, I think we should switch this topic a little bit because it's really cool talking about these artists. But I feel kind of goofy talking about all these, you know, crazy artists who will probably never meet when we got a crazy artist who we're meeting and talking to right now in uh, front of us. And we're not just milking him for all he has and all the knowledge and stuff he's learned. Because, you know, this is he's, he's entered a new phase of artistry because, you know, there's I'd say there's levels to it. There's the guy who can make music. The guy who makes music, the guy who releases on SoundCloud, guy who releases on Spotify, guy who performs, and then the guy who's like, you know, a career demon and, you know, gets contracts and stuff. Jansen's at level five out of six right now. He's about to be getting his contracts. He's just waiting. We're enjoying the process. But Jansen, I, I want to ask you, like, I know, first off, you're an English major. So I just want to know, like, how that influences your music. Like, when do you, would you draw any parallels between writing essays and, uh, you know, analyzing texts versus, like, writing lyrics and stuff like that? Yeah, so for a while, I uh, I focused on mostly poetry writing, um, and that coincides with making songs, you know, almost to a T. I think for me, reading other people's literature and poetry and even song lyrics has helped me a lot in figuring out, like, the type of sound that I want to have. I think a lot of people today, they kind of just go with what's on the radio, and they don't actually... Honestly, they don't read into what else is out in the world. A lot of artists have like outspokenly said that they don't read books. And like you have people on uh, like Sway in the Morning and shit, like reading Llama Llama Red Pajama as like a freestyle because that's about <laughs> as far as they can go. Um, but yeah, being an English major has taught me a lot. I think that just like reading a bunch of stuff, writing poetry every day has made me realize that like there's a lot of deeper stuff that I can go into in my music. And, you know, in the coming months, look out for some, some crazy stuff. I saw that notes app was filled. I was, you know, yeah. I, got, I got some goosebumps. I'm, I'm yeah. waiting for it. And honestly, everybody, like, I've seen some meat riders in my college time. And usually, you know, when your friend makes a song, you want to you wanna like it. You want to fuck with it. But, like, I've seen some heavy JBR meat riders in my time. And honestly, <laughs> it seems like there's potential for more right now. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I was also wondering, me and, me and Kappa were talking a while just about producing and music theory before this uh, recording mm -hmm. started. And I was like, I know you're, like, act, like into, like, music, like, the, the more theory level. Yeah. And you, like, you know, you're talking about different keys and scales. And you're, you have some good relative pitch. I was just wondering, like, how has theory helped you when you make music and do you, do you use it or would you say that you know it's useless and you just kind of do what's in your soul yeah so i work with a lot of super talented musicians so you know shout out to like someone like matt stawinski who's a ridiculous guitarist um they have a crazy grip on music theory and so it makes my life a lot easier but just having a grasp of music theory and knowing keys and pitches and all of this when i'm singing makes it a lot easier for stuff like even just like identifying auto-tune pitches like as little as that seems it's really a big thing yeah. um and then just being able to say hey i want to make a song in like g major today because i like the way my voice sounds in g major yeah. if i had no theory um background like i would have no idea what a g major like scale is for my voice versus like c minor or something like that so i think it, it goes farther than just being able to like sing naturally or being able to like write a good song in order to be an artist you have to have like a look you have to have a sound you have to know what you're talking about otherwise the people in the room just won't really really gravitate towards you so yeah and i've seen i've seen him work in the studio and honestly it's like a different vibe every time like let's say it's a wednesday night it's late it's around 9 p.m we throw on a beat some nights it's some jazzy shit right he likes his jazz and jansen <laughs> will talk about it and it's really slow it's a singy vibe other nights he's rapping He's straight up rapping. He's like a mix between Mac Miller and Juice World. Like, it shit's crazy. I've seen him, like, do some crazy singing stuff, and I love that stuff. Um, but I've also seen him do rap stuff, just like you said. He uses music theory to kind of, like, determine, like, how he's feeling today. What's his voice sound like? Is his voice deeper? Is it, is it higher today? Is it raspier? I think you could apply... I mean, I, this is what I think, because I don't know too much about music theory or, like, theory and music as, at all. But, 
like what I'm seeing him work in his workflow is like he just kind of see he responds to his body and uses like what he knows about music to like make stuff that night happen at a really 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 high level. Don't gas me. Don't gas me. I was wondering um so I make a lot of like a lot of music as well and like I'll I, I don't always put it out but like I'll just be in my basement whatever just doing it and I was wondering cuz I have a really weird relationship with this what do you think about like alcohol and drugs in the studio because for me like I've smoked a little bit before I make music and sometimes it can like I can unleash some of the craziest stuff that I've ever thought about in my life and then sometimes mm. it's like it's a dud like I feel stupid like why did I do this yeah. like what do you what do you what, what's your relationship with that sort of stuff and would you say that it's like a performance enhancing drug and a stimulant or would you like veer away from it yeah so it's all about mindset for me like pretty much if I'm super happy and euphoric at the time of recording a song and I'm high then like I associate good shit with it but then if I'm super sad and like down and I get high and then I record a sad song then I don't want to go back to that song because that vibe can't be replicated so it's kind of like I'll go out with my boys for a night, get super drunk, and I'll go home at like 3 a.m. and pretty much just make a full song and be like, oh, that was hype, because the whole night was hype. Um, yeah. I think like the only time you get like dubs out of songs when you're smoking or drinking is like when you aren't creative. Like if you smoke and then you can't write or you can't freestyle or you can't even mumble like melodies and stuff, then you say, oh, like that was a dub, like I shouldn't have smoked because yeah. that's what like hindered my creativity. But if you smoke and you come up with one of your best songs, then after that, you'll try to replicate that. And that's kind of, that's also a problem, you know, because if you always try to replicate a vibe, then you might end up missing out on like some new stuff that you have in the vault. So it's like, it's kind of a, it's a mess. It's all about the, yeah, it's all about getting the vibe and keeping it. Yeah. What do you think about this, Kappa? You ever, you ever like, I know you're making beats and stuff, but I, yeah. I'd say it's a different game when you're engineering. Nah, yeah. I think that, uh, at least for me, like, Sometimes when I'm high, like, I'll make something sick. Sometimes it'll be something horrible. Um, I mean, I have a question. Besides drugs, what do you think helps you get into that creative zone? Um, like, having no other focus in my life, like, honestly. Like, if everything is going right, I'm the most creative. Like, I know that seems so, so like, baseline, but... I can't have a bunch of things on my mind. Like I need to finish like an essay. Like I need to talk to somebody who I'm fighting with. Like all of those hinder my creativity. So it's like, if I have a clear mind, I can go pretty much anywhere with it. Um, so like, for example, if I have all my work done, no problems with friends, I talk to like my mom that day and like, I'm good with her. Um, and like, Low key, what motivates me is if I'm in a relationship with someone, like whether it's a past relationship, still talking to them or in a new relationship or even just like being with somebody every now and then. Like I kind of need that because I write a lot of shit about love. Mm -hmm. And so I try to draw on it from wherever I can. So whether that's somebody I'm pursuing, somebody I'm already with or somebody I was with at a point, like I always kind of have to have that. Otherwise, like I can't really write the same way. For me, it's like relationships. Like Jason, you just asked, like, are there any other things that like help with creativity? Like personally, I'm not an artist, right? Like I'm not singing in the booth. I'm not like engineering or producing anything. But for just like life stuff in general, like I feel like when my relationships are good, like my creativity is high and my product and my functionality is high. Everything is great. So like when my relationship with my close friends, with my friends, my family, my girlfriend that I have right now, when that when those relationships are going well. I think that's what I'm like the most creative because I'm the most motivated. I think motivation goes hand in hand with like being creative. If like, I guess sometimes like the saddest times of your life, you can make some of the greatest music maybe, but like at that point, I guess motivation isn't like your key factor to being creative, but like yeah. in my day to day life and every single day and like the majority, I think like having motivation um, is basically, let me reword this. I'm saying, the relationships that I have and I build in my life are so important to like my creative process because without them, I think I'm nothing, right? Yeah. Because I think you, when you leave this earth, it's about what you did and how you did it. And those are, that's, you do that through relationships. You like relationships are the key to cr being creative and then being motivated and continually being motiv motivated and creative throughout your entire life. It's like a, uh the saying like people won't remember what you say but they'll remember how you made them feel yeah. so it's like with all the music that i make i don't really care if people know the lyrics but i care about how it makes them feel i care what they walk away with like 
last year when I was recording Midas, like, also, listen to Midas, JBR. Um, but pretty much I made that song with, like, three of my boys, and we worked on it for months. And I remember by the end of it, we were just, like, so euphoric about putting the song out because we had spent a crazy, crazy amount of time, literally months in the studio, perfecting every little thing. And by the time it was done, I remember just sitting back and saying, like, I don't even remember some of the lyrics. Like, I almost mess up when I'm performing this song because, like, I just remember I was so happy when we made it that I don't even need to know the lyrics. Like, it's my song, and I still forget the lyrics. Do you think there's a there's a point to where, like, you said, like, you were in the studio for hours and hours and weeks and months on end to, like, create this beautiful masterpiece? Like, do you think there's not a point where it's, like, with some songs that you reach, like, and you're like, okay, like I just can't perfect this, and then like you have to scrap it. Or do you think like perfection is the key to making it a great song? Like, do you think perfection can hurt you sometimes? Yeah, it's it's case to case. I'm a I'm a perfectionist in general, so like I try to be as perfect as possible. Like you've seen me, like I record like 50 takes of the same like three words just to make sure they're good. Um, but yeah, it's case to case. Like with some songs, if they're worth it, they're worth it. Like and I mean. It, I thought like that uh, what you're saying kind of got me thinking it's like the whole deal with music is everyone wants to be a musician and they all want to be able to make that perfect song and a lot of people get caught up getting crazy at theory or learning so many chords mm -hmm. and you know getting great audio equipment doing all that stuff saying oh I wish I had a twenty thousand dollar setup to be insane it's like mm -hmm. you have to create a feeling and if you you can't do that then you have to figure out how to do that like people will be like oh I want to learn you know I gotta use a D minor diminished and all these jazz chords. It's mm -hmm. like, you, dude, Amy Winehouse is like, like all of her, like a lot of her music, it's just like four basic chords going back and forth. Yeah. And that's insane. And mm -hmm. that's just like a feeling. And a lot of people, like, when you think about a song, like when you think, like it links to a memory. Yeah, and absolutely. For me, it links to a memory because it's associated with a feeling when you first hear it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, like I, I had my whole Apple Music library back when I was an Apple Music sucker organized from like dates uh, and like, like from, you know, newest to oldest. And I could go back, look at the songs and I would know, okay, yeah, that's right before my junior formal and junior year, that song I added yeah. and I'll scroll down and I'll actually feel those feelings that th those songs gave me. So like, if you can replicate that, then that's, that's something like bigger than just music like or maybe yeah. that is music I, I don't really know for sure at the end of the day it's just like music is a universal language like if you think about it everybody is out here doing like different shit like you yeah. know we're all doing different shit but we're all here together talking about music you know everywhere you go you know you could go to another country that speaks another language but they'll know a song that defined a moment like everybody knows like we are the champions like yeah like that's a song everybody knows. Like there are just these moments in music history that change shit. Like Thriller, for example. Like Crazy. everyone knows Thriller. Everyone. You know, and like everybody might not even love Michael Jackson for they know numerous his music. reasons, but they know his music. This man's more famous and, than yeah. probably any US president. Yeah. And so also just to like touch back on your point about like everybody wants this super nice equipment. Everybody wants to like have the same vocal chain as Drake because he sounds a certain way, even though people think he can't sing, like he sounds like he can. Um, like just find your vocal chain. Yeah. Find, find something that makes your voice sound how you think it should on every song and then just replicate that every time and go back to it. Like there's no reason why like anybody out here can't blow up like real shit. Like I haven't Especially figured now. out. Yeah, like I haven't figured out my path yet, but like. I've stopped worrying about blowing up so much and now I'm worried about making the best music that my friends like and then push it from there. Yeah, because like, honestly, your friends are who you're trying to make music for in the facts. end of the day. And like, honestly, Plus my friends are cool as shit. Yeah, so it's <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> but I would say that like music, it's people call it like the game, like, oh, I'm trying to play the game, like the music business. It's a whole nother yeah. side to it. And I would say that's one thing that you're not even really lacking in at this point. You're in the music yeah. business club. I know you had an internship with Sony. Yeah. You probably have seen a lot of shit go down in that whole industry. And, you know, you've seen that sometimes like talent it can take you far but it can't take you all the way you yeah. need either a ridiculous amount of luck but you you got you got to know how to play the game yeah so like, for real what would you say like you know all this stuff all this research that you've done obviously probably a big reason that you're doing it is because you could actually use it on yourself and you have that opportunity mm -hmm. you want to give yourself but what have you said all this uh research has taught you yeah um say yes say yes to everything business-wise like when i was younger 
I had some crazy opportunities, like di like different shit that I just said no to because I was a stubborn kid. And like, what I realized over time is if I had taken those moments and really like realized that they were not normal, like I could have definitely gone farther with it by now. Um, but yeah, what I've learned working in the music industry is that like nothing is concrete. Like an artist could have the biggest song of this year and by next year, no one will know his name. Like, yeah. I mean, especially with the Baby. TikTok, like the TikTok generation, DaBaby's Crazy. actually a great example. He had a massive fall off. Huge. He went from like 53 million monthly listeners on Spotify to whatever, you know, Didn't whatever the, it is uh, now, you know? The, the Watch Me Whip and Nene guy get, get his nudes leaked and then killed someone with a meat cleaver yeah. or something? Yeah, so like, <laughs> it's just stuff like that. It's like everything is so momentary in the music industry that that's why I'm not even worried about blowing up right now because if I become like, an artist in my day to day, like I want to have some longevity. Like I don't want to just be there for one song and then like dip out and nobody and all, know all me. like the the artists that I know that I respect and stuff, they're not trying to blow up. That's not their game plan. They want to yeah. make good music for themselves and others. And I honestly think that's a more respectable thing to do because you probably could blow up if if you just did everything necessary to blow up. Yeah. But would people really be like truly rocking with your music like to that point nah. where they're coming to your shows and being fans like? Dixie D'Amelio, she's probably bigger than any of us will ever be, even if we grind for our whole lives. But Facts. does she really have it? Like, Nobody does she have that knows. respect? And like, does she does she have the love? Like, she could probably sell out a concert before me. But even in the end, like, is her music better? No, I'm I'm not shooting shots at you, Dixie. If you see this, but you know what? <laughs> I'll see. Honestly, come on the show freestyle. We'll see what you got. Honestly, yeah. speaking of that. I'm trying to hear JBR freestyle a little bit. Aww. I'm trying to hear JBR freestyle just Shower a little bit. Yeah. yeah, his freestyles are nuts. Um, want to play a beat from you from YouTube, any beat, so he hasn't heard it before. Want to see what he can do. Um, we'll let him vibe for a little bit, and then toward the end, we'll give him a word or two, to a hard word to fuck with, see if he can fly over it. Okay. Um, we got Jamie behind here. He's going to play a beat for us. Or 12 or 16. No, I don't have to 12. Yeah, so we got JBR here on the podcast. Uh, this is an outro. Uh, We're gonna end every podcast with a little uh, freestyle, yeah. east to west. Let's yeah, go, yeah, Jay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jay, got my hit them with a little. Head out the window, why well, can't life just be simple? Ah, all the voices hey. trend gotta take another hit down, gotta find a way to work it out. I was like 13, walking in the street, head in the sky, I was like in, take me to the corner where the cock has fiend, another ride taking over my bodies. Corner boy sell this, this and that, up all night cooking like insomniacs, hood, I can always build a mind in the trap, develop a cash you never had. Yeah, daddy said don't fuck with them, get your grade, the bills are paid, so you don't gotta worry about a damn thing to say, little nigga like you could be easy to play. Like a game, the rules are strange, like a game, the rules are strange. We could do another beat too. We'll yeah, switch honestly, it up. switch it up for, for JVR. I fuck with this one though. I like that. Yeah. I don't really freestyle. <laughs> I'm gonna give it JVR. Let him run for a little while. Here we go. <laughs> nice intro. Oh. I was on I-95 doing 45 eyes. Roll back in my head. I was smoking on a drill and I got so high. I'm thinking I'm on my mind right now, I can't even tell the time I'm looking at the Rolex on my wrist and bitches wanna fuck with me right now So I gave them a call, told them what's the word, they said come over It's like my song from 2019 and she said baby it's over Cause I don't got it right now, little baby I thought hey. I told you hey. That the money's not long yet, but in two years you can call my phone up Cause I got the money, I got the guala and I got the bitches hey. I'm trying to get hey. the riches, the gold, the gold, the diamonds hey. on Shit. bitches Your raps are trash like, like MSU <laughs> Shit I like Kanye even though I'm a Jew Man I'm playing, I sneeze out you Bitch you hating bitch, who the fuck is you? I'm just playing though, JVR in the stew You know we making money and you know we getting rude Man, I like the hat JBR out here, you don't cap. You know he got the back, go back. You know he from New York. You know he be riding in the cabs. Man, I can't cap. A B C A D E F G. Man, what the fuck was that? You can't leave the letters when you're freestyling. <laughs> Shit, I'm feeling really fly. I can't even tell you, but you know I'm that guy. When I go up, I shoot like the sky. But I can't say that like X, like Y. That's a variable, man. I'm not in math. That's not my style. <laughs> but shit, I almost failed calc one like three damn times, man. How many times? Like three damn times. Damn. Shit. Cause I didn't know the Y from the, all the X's. Shit, I can't do that, my guy. Fuck. Okay, give me three words. Shit. Yo, we got uh, lyrical. 
Lyrical. Ballin. Ballin. It's something a little harder like pumpkin. Orange. Okay. Orange. Uh, uh, like Cole Bennett. I got lyrical, lyrical, uh, lemonade. Uh, please stay the day, cause I don't got time to waste on you. So, baby, it's cool. Yeah. I've been driving down Malibu. I'm just ballin'. Like Esperanza Spalding. You know, my money's longin'. Elongated longevity in this business. If you fucking with me, you fucking with a Caltech, and my boys got it. Cause they'll pull Ay. up on your block 30 deep. You know me, my name is Jensen. JB, y'all got a team behind him. He don't got time to rhyme, but he got time for the slimes, and he got time for the bars, and he goes far, so he knows that it ain't time. Wait, what was the last word? I'm gonna get focused now. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. 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 It's, 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 it's October 31st in, in like five days. I got a pumpkin. I carved it up. Fuck with me. Fuck with me. We know the pumpkin. Let's go. Let's go. Jamie, cut that. We just, yeah, yeah, we just. Hey, we're gonna get one one more beat. Asher, I didn't know you could do that. I, did you know he, he could no, do that? I, I didn't know he could freestyle. That was shit, that was shit, bro. I'm, I'm tight. I, I get you the were the still floor. flowing, though. You were, he was still flowing. I wasn't flowing. Uh, okay. Just walk down to the field real quick. Yeah, I got like 30 mil for my contract deal, and that shit's ripped. Uh, uh, like Aaron just hit it out of the park. That's a home run. What she talking about right now? She a homer. Yeah, yeah, she know, bruh. Uh, I don't know what to talk about right now, but I got like all my boys in here. They really dig a dig in my sound. That's and up. I know that the VS hey. is clear right hey. now. For her name, Moscato. And baby, like a Vato. Cause I got so much cargo. I'm looking for a nice girl, figure like a model. If she wanna see me, then she gotta greet me Don't wanna be greedy But my hands on that green leaf Baby girl's deceiving Yeah She better believe me Living the lavish life Fucking on the Cuban though She got some ice Lil baby want the last But I hit it twice And she go goodnight Please say bye bye Uh bye. Order the Uber for her Now she asking for some food I call the sushi for her Then I told her license plate It's a Ford Explorer Yeah It's a Ford Explorer Yeah 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 Hey, that's JVR. We're good, bro. That was crazy. I can hit an occasional. I, I can hit too. an occasional rap freestyle. But nah, uh, we're leaving it. We're leaving. We're but leaving but I'm a, I'm a singer. I'm a singer though. So if you ever need me to serenade your grandma on her birthday, I got you. Yeah, he's got. <laughs> also, shout out to all the 40 year old moms out there. I respect you. I love you. <laughs> Um, you're single man, and I know it's so hard being a single mom. So I know he's actually like a therapist for single moms. So if you want to talk facts. to him, you got a snap. Jake I'm the Barr, love doctor. Streaks. Um, you send streaks. Yeah, I I do send streaks. Hey, that's MMBC. Um, presents B Major. Oh word. And um, uh, let me uh give a little outro to JBR. He's gonna plug his shit, and then we'll get out of here, roll a fat J, and uh, smoke it up. Okay, if you like good music. Follow JBR on Spotify. Follow Jansen Rhea on Instagram. Make sure you blow my shit up. I'm about to release an album in a couple months, but two EPs are on the way before that. So watch out for it. And if you like bad music, I'll probably put my SoundCloud in the bio too. So everyone, everyone got different tastes. Nah, but hey. he can freestyle though. That's what matters. He can good. freestyle. Hey, MMBC presents B Major. We're out. Great rap. Thanks, JBR. We love you.